the bottom 95% of the data. That's how a lot of these problems are going to be worded. Find the z-score that repre represents the bottom or top or middle, in this case the bottom, 95% of the data. this thermometer stuff. If you recall, the thermometers had a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, which automatically mapped the thermometer reading to its own z-score. Do, do you remember that? So like a thermometer reading of 1.38 was a z-score of 1.38. That's why this works so nicely for us. So what that means is when we find a z-score for this, listen carefully please, for this particular example, because the mean was zero and the standard deviation was one, the z-score we find will be the thermometer reading. Are you with me on that? Okay, otherwise we have to do a little bit more work and I'll teach that to you in section 6.3 how to go from a z-score to a value. I'll teach you how to do that. It's not hard, but I'll teach you that. So for right now, because the mean is zero for the situation and the standard deviation is one, the z-score is the value, is the, the, the thermometer temperature in degrees, and the thermometer temperature in degrees is a z-score. They're one and the same thing for this one example. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do, we've got to draw a picture. That's why I told you in every single case we are going to be drawing pictures in this, this section. So, we'll draw a picture here. Now, what you've got to know is a couple things. Firstly, what value is always in the middle for a standard normal distribution? Zero. Zero because our mean is zero for every case. Okay, that's great. Now, what we want to do, instead of looking for a z-score to a probability, which is what we've been doing this whole time, we're going to be going from a probability or an area to a z-score. Are you with me on that? So normally this is what we would have happen here. We'd go, okay, I would be drawing a line, putting a z-score, and shading one side of this. I'd be looking up that area in my table or with my calculator, and that would be the probability. Now, do you have your okay? Now, we're going backwards now. Instead of looking up a z-score, what I'm doing is reading this problem real careful. It says, find the z-score. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I was given a z-score, or before I had a z-score, I looked at the area. Now I want to find the z-score when I'm already given an area. You just have to be good about what the bottom, what the top, and what the middle means according to this picture. If I'm talking about the bottom 95% of the data, the bottom 95%, that would be a value and 95% of it would be lower than that. Does that make sense to you? So where are we going to draw our line for our area? Is our bottom 95% over here? Okay. This would be the bottom like 0%. Does that make sense? The way you, you can think about this. Locate, the, locate 50% first. Locate 50% on your, your table. Where's 50%? Where's 50%? Right in the middle. This is symmetrical, right? I hope so. Would 50% be over here? Would that be half of it? Or certainly not going this way. <coughs> We're going this way. So where's half your graph? Hopefully it'd be right in the middle, right? Would you agree that this is, look up here at the board please, that this is the bottom 50% and this is the top 50%? Would you agree? Yes. Now, okay. If I draw a line over here, Let's pretend that this is like 40%. Would you agree that this is the bottom 40% and this is the top 60%? So if I say bottom 40% or I say top 60%, do you see I'm saying the same thing? Would you say that this is the bottom 60% and the top 40%? Is that okay? This is the bottom 60%. Notice that this would be like the bottom 10%, this is the bottom 50%, this is the bottom 60%. Where's the bottom 95%? Am I going to draw my line over here to the left or over here to the right? This would be the bottom 50%, the bottom 60%, the bottom 70%, the bottom 8 This is like the bottom 95%. 
shade what you were talking about. If I want to find the bottom 95%, it's 95% of the data is below that number. Would you raise your hand and feel okay with that? I mean, honest raising of hands if you're all right with that. Okay, some people didn't. I, I can't move on unless you unless you do. Are you guys okay with this or not? Yes? <coughs> that this is the bottom 95%, or this value is going to represent the bottom 95%. Yes? Now, what I'd like to do, did you have this picture drawn? Because I'm going to have to lower that screen over there. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use your table so that we can find the bottom 95%. Okay, now I've asked you to bring this uh, to every class from now on. Take out your table. Just do all of them. It's fine. Otherwise, we'll do like a laser light show. <coughs> okay. Hey, folks, thinking back to that picture we just had on the board, do you think that we're going to be in this situation with a negative z-score or this situation with a positive z-score? What do you think? Where was the line drawn? Was it to the right of zero or left of zero? Right. Definitely the right. That's why you have to be very good at knowing like the bottom 95%, the bottom 10%, the top 30%. You've got to be very good at that. It's like the more than, less than thing. You remember that? If you didn't know more than, less than, you were stuck on those problems on your test. Here, you're going to be stuck if you don't know how to draw a picture of the top 5%, which coincidentally is the same thing as the bottom 95%. That's the same exact thing. Right, so here, we're dealing with the bottom 95%. Our picture looked like that. That's why we draw a picture. So we're over here in this situation. So I'm going to ignore the negative z-scores. Go over here to the positive z-scores. And let's think about what this table actually means. Can you tell me which are the z-scores? Are the numbers, let's call this the body, are the numbers in the body of our graphic here, are these z-scores or are these z-scores? Which one, the body or the sides? The sides of the z-scores. Good. What are these? Area. Areas. These are areas. These are z-scores. True? You, you can't confuse that. Okay, you can't confuse that. Because if you, if you go right now and you look up 0.95, you can find it. 0.95 is right here. However, you'd be looking at the z-score, right? Are we try we're trying to find a z-score right now. I've actually given you the area. So you need to know the difference between a z-score and an area. The z-score is the distance from the, the center, from the mean. The area is the shaded region. And we're going to be going two ways on this graph. If you have a z-score and you're looking for an area, you look up the z-score, these are your areas. We have areas here. We've got z-scores on the sides. What have I given you here for this example that you have on your, your paper right now? Have I given you a z-score to look up, or have I given you an area to look up? Area. area. Definitely an area. Let's see if we can find it. Let's go down here. I need to zoom in a bit, I think. We're looking for... 95, 95, 95%, 95 how much is 95%? Point nine five. 0.95, all right, can you find 0.95? Notice that these are all four decimal places, that's 0 0.9500. What we're doing right now, if you're not with it, we're looking up an area, and we're gonna find the corresponding z-score to that area. I've given you an area, that's why you shaded it, the area was 0 0.9500, let's find it. Well, it's here's 0 0.93, 0 .9, wait a minute. That's 0 0.9495, that's 0 0.9505. It's right in between there, right? So right now it says, here's how you do this for, for normal. Let's say this was exactly here, by the way, it, you're not always going to get the exact value, okay? It's, it's in between here. These are, these jump, there's not every single value. Your calculator will give you the exact thing. It's not right there. Let's say it had been that one. Could you find the z-score that correlates with this 0 0.9495? Yes. You would have 1.6. What? 1.64. Right? This one would be 1.65. Are you with me on that? Now, there's a few special special numbers here, like the 0.95. You're going to notice there's a little asterisk right there. 
Like, what in the world is that asterisk doing? They've actually calculated this one special, and they've calculated that one special for you, 0.995, because we use those all the time. You can find that in chapter 7. We use those a lot. So this has a special little value. I want you to follow that down on your table. Follow that down. See where it goes. What's the z-score that's associated with an area of 0.9500? Here's what you just did on your table. Hopefully you all had your table out. I'm requiring you to bring that from now on. Uh, we just looked up this area. We noted that we looked up area to the left. That was 0.95. Remember, it was always area to the left, correct? So that we, this worked for us because all the area we wanted was to the left of that score. We looked up that area. It gave us a z-score of 1.645. You with me? And we'll feel okay about doing that. Now, the interpretation is the important thing here. The interpretation says area and probability <coughs> are the same thing. Here's, here's what, or in proportion is the same thing. What we said was 95% of the thermometers in this case, 95% will have a reading of less than 1.645 degrees when dunked in cold water. That's what that says. Remember that the only reason why I can say 1.645 degrees is because the mean was zero, standard deviation was one, so a z-score is a degree in this case, in this one case, and a degree is a z-score. So this interpretation says this. So 95% of the thermometers will have a reading of less than 1.645 degrees. is when it's dunked in uh, water that has that's free like zero degrees. That's what that means. Also, you could do this interpretation. There's a 95% chance that if you randomly select a thermometer, it will have a reading of less than 1.645 degrees. The same exact interpretation right there. How many people feel okay with this so far? Okay, I want you to try something with your calculators right now. If you have your calculator, do this. I want you to go to your distribution button like we've been doing the past uh, chapter. Past chapter. So second, VARS button. Give it to your dis distribution. Go down to number three. It should be inverse normal. Do you see it? INV norm. Press that button. You just have to be careful on this. Your calculator does not know what you're actually asking for. You always have to give it, just like your table, the area to the left. Okay, the area to the left. You have to do that. You have to give it that. We'll talk about some examples in just a little bit. But you have to give it the area to the left of whatever you're looking at. So here, I have to point, plug in 0.95. Try that on your calculator. Plug in 0.95, press enter. You should get 0.16446 uh, or something like that. 1.44, is it 6? 1.6448. 448, okay. 1.6448. And that rounds to the 1.645, which is how they got it on their, their table. See how you can use your calculator? Or the table, even one. It's fine. Let's try some more examples. I really want you to get the handle on like the top blank percent and the bottom blank percent. You really got to know that stuff. So we're drawing pictures, sure, looking up stuff with our table or with our calculator. 